Remember those who led you. Look at their life. Say, I want to have this in my life. Obeying through the Word of God and through the Holy Spirit. But use your brains so you, member of the church, have some patience with, you, with your pastor. Pray for him, show him some love. Who has invested in your life? Who has invested in my life? I'm not just the person I am today, because many people invested in my life. So today I can call myself an adult, grown, stable Christian. People, especially leaders, have invested in me. Their money, their time, their grace, their patience with prayers and they gave me a lot of opportunities so I could develop myself and discover who I am in Jesus Christ and in the kingdom of God. Those leaders, I want to pay tribute today, I want to thank them. A season of preparation. In 1991, in that year, I walked into this church, the Victory Outreach Church in Amsterdam. By that time, Pastor Raul Diaz was the pastor over there. And what I remember are his great sermons, such an anointing. They really touched my heart, my soul. And over there, in those services, when I was sitting there, the seed was planted in my heart for Christ. So I can now call myself a mature Christian. Because when I entered that church, I knew nothing about Jesus Christ, the Bible and the faith. Pastor Raul Diaz has passed away a few years ago. And I want to thank him and his family that he shared his life with us. Thank you, Pastor. My first steps with Jesus. In 1992, Geoffrey Leto became pastor of this church. And it was a great time for me over there. In that church, I met my Savior and I was growing in the things of Jesus Christ. There I was saved, I got baptized, I learned how to read my Bible, how to pray. And I got many opportunities over there in the ushers, cleaning the church, evangelizing. There I, there I discovered I'm a teacher of the Word of God. And I want to thank Pastor Geoffrey Leto and his beautiful wife, Sister Ludrid, for the divine atmosphere they created over there. For I think such an atmosphere is necessary for new believers, newborn babies like I was, to grow into the things of God. Thank you, Pastor Geoffrey. I really love you. You are a man of God. A midterm evaluation. In 1998, my wife and me got married and in 2000, we were invited to take part of this program. A missionary a training program in the Mother Church, La Puente, LA, California. By that time, the Mother Church was over there and Pastor Sonny Jr. had just become pastor over there. But Pastor Sonny Agansoni, the founder, he has always been being my spiritual example. His life and faith have also always been an encourage, encouragement for me and an example. In LA, we discovered, my wife and me, that we were further in the faith than we, well, than we thought. We didn't need any more training, now we had to put it into practice. And I don't think Pastor Sonny knows the influence he had on my life, uh, not only with his sermons, but also with the personal talks I had with him through the years. And I thank him for his faithfulness, for his faith, for his example. Thank you very much, Pastor. In 2000, the year 2000, my wife and me, we uh, moved to Rotterdam. And over there, we saw with our own eyes what God can do with a small group of faithful believers. There were just, I think, 30 or 40 people. And we saw this church grow through hundreds of people. And when I think about this time, I feel joy and appreciation. And also all the wonderful brothers and sisters I met over there. Uh, like Alan, Willem, Helmich, uh, Sergio, uh, Ronnie Mendelssohn. There are too many to mention all of them. But I want to thank uh, Pastor Jerry Mendelssohn and his wonderful wife, Sister Sanne Lou, for their faithfulness, for their love, and for not giving up whatever happens. I thank you for your life. A place of dignity. That's how I call the home. People who have been in the home, they know what I'm talking about. I've been teaching and counseling many times in homes, more hundreds and hundreds of times in Amsterdam, Rotterdam, La Puente, I don't know how many places. But over there, I have seen with my own eyes what God can do. People who were rejected by their family, who were given up. Society told them, you are worthless, we cannot use you anymore. We have given you so many opportunities, chances, but you wasted them all. It's hopeless, your life is wasted. And over there, I saw, I really experienced how God can do everything. 
There's nothing impossible for our God. He changed those people, those men completely. And some of them, after a few months, I didn't recognize them. I asked, who are you? And then I saw, this is the broken man that came into her home and God has changed his life. God started on the inside and worked on the outside. The home has changed me, has formed me. And I want to thank and appreciation for all the homies, home directors. Thank you very much that I could be part of this miracle. So my wife and me, we left the Victory Artists Amsterdam in a nice way. We are still friends with many people over there and with Pastor Geoffrey, Sister Ludwig. Uh, from time to time, we even visit that church. So I think we did it in a nice way. And I have fond memories of those people. Then after that, we joined this church, Renew Your Mind. And Prophet Ofori was the pastor over there. And in that church, I learned a lot about the prophetic, about healing, about deliverance, the demonic and sickness, and how to discern and what is the prophetic, what to do, what not to do. I saw a lot of healing over there and deliverance. And I thank you, uh, Prophet Ofori, for sharing your life, your wisdom, your knowledge with me. And in that church, I was pastor for three years. Uh, those wonderful brothers and sisters, I learned so much in that church. Pray for your pastor. It's very easy to criticize a pastor, the leader of your local church. When you don't agree with anything, he is to blame or she. It's her fault. He is to blame. When you don't agree with some decision, it's his fault. He is to blame. When I became a pastor, I realized, I felt what it is to be a pastor. The pressure on you is tremendous, spiritually, mentally, socially, people expecting you to do this, to do, do, to do many things. When they don't want to solve anything or they cannot solve it, they put it on your plate and you have to solve it in their way, how they want to do it. Well, if you want to do it yourself, do it yourself. Don't give it to your pastor. But everything comes on the desk of the pastor and he has to solve it. And uh, as a pastor, you hear a lot of gossip, sometimes vicious, evil gossip, gossip. People come and tell you, do you know about this sister or this brother? Or him? Why don't you go and pray for this person? Search your heart, cleanse your heart. Don't come to your pastor with a lot of vicious gospel. Why? Why are you telling him those things? First pray, and if it's really something, then go to him. But first pray, and don't just gossip because you have to gossip. His ears are not a garbage can. So being a pastor is tougher than you think. It's much, much tougher and heavier than you think. Now, a pastor cannot tell you everything. He cannot explain every decision. He knows a lot of things that are confidential because people are talking to him, but also things that the Lord tells him. He cannot tell you everything. You cannot even understand it. And he's not accountable to you in the first place. In the first place, he is accountable to the Lord Jesus, to God himself. He has to talk to God. And if you don't agree with anything, go on your knees and pray because many things you cannot understand because he, he cannot clearly explain it to you. Being a pastor uh, can be a burden. It can be very lonesome, but it's also very rewarding because uh, by the grace of God, you can be part of people, their life. You can see the hand of God working in the church, in the city, in people's life. Uh, so give your pastor uh, what he deserves, the peace, the grace, the love, the strength that you want to receive yourself. Give it also to him or her. And I want to pray now for all the pastors that you will be faithful, that you receive the love of God, the grace of God, the wisdom of God, the strength of God. And I'll also pray for protection over your life and your family because many lives of pastors and their families are attacked by the demonic. And I pray the blood of Jesus over this family of you, my pastor, that you will be faithful, that you will not give up, you will not stop, you will not quit, but that you will get the strength of God and that you will continue to do faithfully the work of God. I pray this for you and your family in Jesus' name. So you, member of the church, have some patience with, you, with your pastor. Pray for him, show him some love, don't gossip. First, go on your knees, pray for him and the church, because if he is prospering, you too will prosper. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. The Bible on honoring your leaders. Maybe by now you think, well, this uh, Dwight, <laughs> that's my name. He is uh, bowing down for pastors. He's saying I have to obey them and honor them and give them all the credit and honor and money. No, no, no. I'm not saying that. Don't twist my words. But let's read what the Bible tells us about 
honoring your leaders. I start in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 7. Remember those who led you, who spoke the word of God to you, and considering the result of their way of life, imitate their faith. Verse 17, obey your leaders and submit to them, for they keep watch over your souls as those who will give an account so that they may do this with joy, not groaning, you hear me, not groaning, for this would be unhelpful for you. Obedience. Obedience is not blind obedience. He is not a sergeant major, your pastor, you have to do this, you have to do this, you have to do it, you have to obey, you have to obey, obey, obey. No, it's not blind obedience. First of all, God has given you brains, use them. Use your wisdom. You have brains, use them. And God gave you another tool, prayer. Go on your knees and ask the Holy Spirit. My pastor asked me this and this and this. Is it from you or not? So we're not talking about blind obedience. We are talking about obeying through the word of God and through the Holy Spirit. But use your brains and pray. Imitate their faith. Look at their life. Say, I want to have this in my life. Imitate those things in their life that are divine, that are godly. For they keep watch over your souls as those who will give an account. They will give an account one day. They are accountable for what they did, how they treated their sheep. Because they received the sheep, God entrusted the sheep, the members of the church, to this pastor. So he one day will have to give an account. Not only one day, but every day the Holy Spirit is speaking to him. And it's a heavy task. So that they may do this with joy, not groaning. That's up to you. Do you help the pastor with joy? Or with groaning. The choice is yours. I give you another scripture. 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 12 and 13. But we ask you, brothers and sisters, to recognize those who diligently labor among you and are in leadership over you in the Lord and give instruction, and that you will regard them very highly in love because of their work. Live in peace with one another. So that's your attitude towards your leaders towards your pastor with love and help them. Now the scripture, 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 17. The elders who lead well are to be considered worthy of double honor, especially those who work hard at preaching and teaching. We're living in a time when it's uh, fashionable, when it's uh, okay to uh, criticize your leaders, whether they are pastor or president, or whatever function they have of authority, you have to criticize them, you have to, 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 to discern what's happening over there. But we people of God, we are totally different. We are called by the Spirit of God to discern things and to see things in the Spirit. After that, we came to this church, the Rots, in Amsterdam, uh, with uh, Apostle Oswald Hart. And I got a lot of opportunities over there to preach, to teach, to counsel, to pray for people. I've prayed for many people there. And I've learned a lot. I've really grown in the things of God, especially the spiritual things of God and the prophetic. I want to thank uh, Pastor uh, Apostle Oswald Hart and his wonderful wife for uh, the love we had over there. We, were, we felt safe. We felt cherished over there. Me, my wife and my daughter really felt at home there. And with sadness in our heart, we had to leave that church. And I also want to thank some people that uh, have invested in my life, that made me grow in the things of God. First of all, Brother Doogie, Brother Douglas, for all his faithfulness, his prayer, his person, his wonderful personality in Christ. I want to thank you, Brother Doogie. And also people like uh, Ton, Owen, Mark, Victor. And also something different. I learned a lot through books and YouTube. And over there, I met people, well, I met them, Spurgeon, I saw this is the way you can explain the Bible. It really taught me how to read the Bible and how to explain the Bible. Spurgeon, Towser and his books. John Wimber, I was, use, I was watching his videos. Uh, the patience you have in healing, when you are praying for people, wait for the leading of the Holy Spirit. He gave me a lot of things I can use now. And Jeff Arnold, his excitement in sermons. I also, sometimes I'm overexcited by that. So how he is using it, Jeff Arnold, how he is using it in his sermons. So he's also an example for me. 
And now we are part of this new church plant in the city of Amsterdam. It's now the year 2021. It's still too early to say anything about this. And now we are part of this church planting team. And we're looking forward for exciting things that God will use everything he has te been teaching us uh, for years, me, my wife, and my daughter, that we use it in this church plant. Who has invested in your life? Which people have invested through the years in your life? Maybe the only things you remember are negative things. Then at this moment, I want to pray for you. I break every negative thing in your life. This influence, I break it in the name of Jesus. I call upon the blood of Jesus to cleanse your mind of all these negative things. I pray in the name of Jesus that you will close your eyes, that he will warn you for this person that will bring you further away from Jesus. I pray that Jesus will open your eyes, that he will give you more time to spend with people who bring you closer into the kingdom of God. I pray that you yourself will be an example for people, that one day people will mention your name and say, well, this person, she or he was an example for me. Because of her, I am here today and I'm a mature Christian. Because of him or her, I have overcome all these problems. I pray that you will be this person. Thank you in Jesus' name. Be blessed and stay blessed. If you want to support me, please like this video and subscribe. Thank you.